I was told to keep it brief, so let's get right into it. Assuming you read the title, you'll know that I'll be trying to visit every single London borough. I'll be doing this as part of my four night stay in Wimbledon, and expect to have it done rather promptly, assuming I have a decent plan. Before we begin, here are some questions I shall answer. 1. Has this been done before? Bad question! Yes, of course it's been done before. Some people have done it in a day, I might add. I highly recommend watching these videos I have up on screen right now if you haven't already. 2. Will I do it in a day? Short answer, no. I plan to do it in three days because I'm very lazy, and it requires you to start early in the morning and from one of very few specific stations. That's just a bit of a pain. 3. Do I even have a plan? Okay, this I actually do. I'll keep it brief. On the first day, I'll do about 23 bars in the north, using mainly the Elizabeth and Piccadilly lines and the DLR. Second day, I'll finish off the north and then move on to the southwest by doing a long run from Richmond to Wimbledon. And day three will be a long, slow ride on the tram line to tick off the final three bars. Well, that seems simple enough. Now time to hop on the train. Oh wait, somebody's mysteriously calling. Hello, Ralph. This is Jay Foreman off of the internet. So uh, as soon as I found out you were doing a challenge where you're visiting all 32 boroughs of Greater London, I thought, well, you know what? I need to come up with a thing that makes it even harder. So uh, the extra challenge you've got, now I want you to find a goodbye sign. Almost every borough has got signs up that say, welcome to such and such borough. But there are very, very few examples of a sign that says, thank you for having visited said borough. More than one borough does them. Find at least one goodbye and thank you for visiting such and such borough sign. So um, that's your extra challenge, and good luck! Now, how'd you turn this thing off? Oh, Jay, please remember that I actually do watch your videos and know exactly which bars have this feature. With that said, let's hop on the sleeper train from Edinburgh Waverley to London's Euston Station. Okay, so first part of the journey. I'm currently getting into Edinburgh Waverley. Haha, <laughs> look, there it is. Uh, so I will be going down and taking the sleeper train starting just now. Let's go. This is the sleeper train, and it should be a fun ride. Okay, so this should be the room, room number two. Oh wow, this looks great. Uh, charging my portable charger, which I will need a lot of. Uh, I'll need to use that a lot because. My phone loves to run out of battery when I'm on the tube. Emergency exit through the window. That is always great to have, because then I can truly be James Bond. I shall start recording again in the morning, but for now, I need, like, some form of beauty sleep. I don't know. Breakfast should be nice. So, it's 6am, precisely, on Thursday morning. Today, I should be having breakfast in about half an hour, and then going uh, off the train in... 45 minutes after that, then I should be off on my way. First one I'll take. I was definitely in the right frame of mind, even though my journey had not gone exactly the way I had planned. The original idea was that the train would go directly from the north, but it ended up coming from Harrow, taking off that bar, Brent, Ealing, Hammersmith and Fulham, Kensington and Chelsea, before finally arriving in Camden. I set off on my journey, taking the Northern Line from Euston to King's Cross, and then the Hampton City Line to Westbourne Park, where I'd meet Mr. Badger 64. This would take off Westminster. I then continued on that line down to Hammersmith Station, where I transferred to the Piccadilly Line, which I took to Heathrow Airport. This ticked off the bars of Hounslow and Hillingdon. So we're currently at Heathrow Airport. We're about to go off on the Elizabeth Line again to start my grand journey all the way to Romford, so we'll see what happens. Using the Elizabeth Line, I was able to get all the way from Heathrow to Romford Station. I then turned back to Whitechapel and got it to its other end at Abbey Wood, which got me to Bexley. I then turned back to Canary Wharf to have lunch. All of this ticked off quite a few boroughs. This included Islington, the City of London, Tower Hamlets, Ham Sandwich, Redbridge, Barking and Dagenham, Havering, Greenwich and Bexley, finally getting me over the halfway mark. So the deal is, so far I've visited 17 bars plus the City of London, which means I have 15 more to do, but I think I'm only going to do like 5 more today. So I then took the good old Doctrines Line Railway down to Greenwich Station, where I would then transfer to the Thameslink. I then took that all the way to London Bridge Station, where I then enjoyed the station's pretty iconic design, before taking the Jubilee Line to Waterloo. All of this ticked off Lewisham, Southwark, and finally Lambeth. Once I got to Waterloo Station, I actually thought it would be quite fun to see how cycling was in London. 
I hired a Santander bike and ended up cycling from Waterloo to Trellick Tower near Westbourne Park. Cycle super highway. Thanks, Jay Foreman. I took some nice photos in the borough of Westminster while on my travels, which was nice. I then walked along the canal over to Wilsdon, and by chance I stumbled across something I needed to complete this expedition with full marks. Walking around the Notting Hill area, where I'm, well, I'm sort of in Westminster right now, as you can obviously tell. Look what I found. CJ, I got your uh, challenge. Uh, hooray! From here, I got the Bakerloo line from Kilburn Park to Paddington, and then the district all the way to Wimbledon Station, which would be my final stop of the day since it was near my hotel. With this, I ticked off the two best boroughs on the map, those being Wandsworth and Wimbledon. No, I am not calling it by its forbidden name. Shame on you, Keith St. John Joseph. Later that night, I decided to take a drive over to the borough of Kingston upon Thames, putting the number of boroughs visited on day one at 23. Unfortunately, I didn't take any footage, so if you want a source, it'll literally just be trust. That does it for day one, so let's just head right on to day two. Okay, so it's the second full day of me being in London, and my plan today is to essentially tick off all the northern bars and also get to Richmond. So I will be taking the district line from Wimbledon Station all the way up to Paddington, and then I'll switch to the Harrison City line, take that to King's Cross St Pancras, and then finally take either the Victoria or Piccadilly, it doesn't really matter, up to, I think it's Finsbury Park, because it has direct lines to Harringay, Hackney, Waltham Forest, and Enfield. In the end, I made it a bit simpler by merely getting off of Victoria Station and getting the namesake line to Black Horse Road, which ticked off the bars of Hackney, Harringay, and Waltham Forest. I took that same line back down to Finsbury Park, where I switched to the Piccadilly line north to Arners Grove, ticking off the bar of Enfield. So I've decided to change my entire plan. I just got out of the Amos Grove station. I was originally going to take the Piccadilly line all the way back down to like King's Cross and then take the Northern line up to a station in Barnet. But it turns out I can literally just walk to Barnet pretty, because it's, it's extremely close to here. And that'll cut off an entire journey, which I don't need to do anymore. I walked the distance to the borough of Barnet, bringing my total borough count up to 28. I stopped off for some Marks and Spencer's delicious chocolate cornflake cakes boxes and set off back down to Kew Gardens. So I'm gonna take the district line, see if I can get that to Richmond, and go back, take the district line again to Wimbledon, and then take the tram link all the way to uh, the first station in Bromley, and then I'll be done. That's right. It was at this point where I realised I could finish every borough in just that day. So I went off to Kew Gardens, ticking off Richmond, and then immediately got the district back down to Wimbledon. From there, I hopped on the tram link for my final journey of the challenge. So I'm currently in Wimbledon Station, and I'm going to take the tram link all the way to, I think it's Elmer's End, because that means that I can get to the borough of Bromley. So I took the tram down through the borough before arriving at my final three. Firstly, Sutton, and then Croydon, and then I noticed this. I'm on the tram just heading into Bromley. I would have gone tomorrow. Very lucky. That's good. Essentially, the plan was originally to do this trip on the third day, so me deciding to do the tram trip on the second day was maybe the best decision I made on the whole trip, since it would have been closed for the third day, meaning I'd spend ages trying to find alternative travel. And at last, I finally made it into Bromley, completing the challenge. So, I'm at the final station, and this is in Elmer's End, which is in Bromley, which means I have visited every single London borough. I had finally done it. The quest was over. I spent the rest of my time in London visiting lots of different locations and actually spending time there, rather than going underneath them on the tube. Notably, I did a 10k from Wimbledon Common to Hammersmith Station, and also visited Battersea Power Station. Overall, I really enjoyed this trip. Thank you to Jay Foreman for the cameo and inspiration, and here's to my next challenge. Visiting all 50 US states. Maybe.